Welcome back to Shoot the Shot, an NBA and variety show. It is December 16th, 2021. Jonathan Osborne here. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. I am got I got a like nice little fever blister for those of y'all that can uh, see on YouTube. So that's we're great. We had tornado warnings and watches all throughout Nebraska today. One touchdown about 20 miles from where I'm at in Omaha. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, today was an interesting day. Uh, it was like summer conditions, but in December, it was very odd. Yeah, that's I mean, obviously, you know, everyone is aware of like the tragic tornado in Kentucky, like it's been like multiple states. And um, one of the meteorologists in my area was talking about it and how like the thing with like hurricanes is people have enough time to prepare and like get out of the way yeah with tornadoes especially if you live like in the midwest and you're just accustomed right. to tornadoes your whole life it's like you get like a thousand tornado warnings before one actually like impacts you personally yeah. so after a while it's just like you get all these tornado warnings and you're like eh, you're not so worried about it so but right. yeah it's just, uh absolutely tragic i didn't mean to depress everyone this early in the podcast <laughs> but um look i wanted something happened like 20 minutes before we jumped on here so like the magic game ended tonight and i got my haircut yesterday so i get my haircut roughly like every two to three weeks and every single time i come home it's like a tradition my wife looks at me and says that's the best haircut you've ever had (laughs) every time i come home tonight she says something to me that she's never said before i didn't know Mm -mm. how to take it she goes you know a lot of people like everyone looks better when they get a haircut but like you specifically, you look so much younger. And I didn't know how to take that. So it's like I look that much worse than everyone else when I don't have a haircut, which now I'm like, OK, I guess I just have to go and get a haircut every single week. Like, you're, yeah, you're you're calling your barber on speed dial more than you already have him. And you're just going to get you're going to get like biweekly haircuts now. Well, the thing if I wanted to do that, I could. I've had the same barber now for I'm 28 years old. So 13 years now, I've had the same barber as, as cut my hair. I followed him to multiple barber shops, you know, that he's been to. But it really felt like a backhanded compliment from my wife. It, it yeah. really did. She's like, you, you just, she's like, you look, you know, like a, you know, a hot dad right now. Wow. But she's like, when when your hair is like growing out, you look like you're a middle aged man. No. And I'm like, I'm not even thirty. I'm not even thirty yet. Was that? Did she say that? She did say that. She said, when wow. your hair is growing, it's like scruffy on the side. She's like, you look like a middle-aged man. I can't believe our show manager would treat you that way. I'll have to have a talk with her. I'm sorry. So anyways, yeah, I just uh, I felt the need to come on here mm. and vent. And uh, yeah, okay. So folks, um, something at least I think is, is pretty incredible, something very eventful, uh, some would say historic, uh, happened last night. So we're recording this Wednesday night, um, but Tuesday night, in Madison Square Garden, uh, one Stephen Curry broke the all-time three-point three-pointers made record, um, recently set by Ray Allen with 2,973. Steph broke the record his second three of the game in the first quarter to hit 2,974. He ended the night 2,977. So uh, we might have to buckle in, folks. Luke and I we disagree on a lot of things, but usually we're able to do so pretty civilly um but in the weeks leading up to Steph breaking the record I've mentioned it a few times in the group chat that we have here you know at the six man show me Luke and Kevin and just talking about like guys you know Steph is he's he's inching closer to you know breaking the record and you know the the last like you know if he gets within 10 like it's gonna be like appointment tv for me like I just have to watch the games and in case Steph has one of these crazy nights it's not outside of the realm of, of possibilities for Steph to make 10 threes in one night. And Luke's, um, I almost want to say attitude about this, the last few weeks has been, I could not care less about Steph Curry breaking the record. And mm-hmm. then it just kind of um, started the conversation of, so like you you don't care about, you know, professional athletes making history. So um, that's where we are. We've, we've been planning to have this conversation for a few weeks, but Steph actually breaking the record. It just seems like the perfect time to have this conversation. So Luke, um, the floor is yours. I would love to hear why. Yeah. So for me, the, the biggest reason with it is that, and first I'll say for him, 
And for his organization, it is a huge moment for him. After the game, he said, I feel like I now can call my like you know, I can call myself the best three point shooter of all time because I broke this record. To me, I could say I called him and we all did call him the best three point shooter, what, four or five seasons ago? I'm gonna I say mean, six or seven. I'm pretty uh, sure 2014, 2015, I was getting into yeah. arguments with my pastor and he was trying to say it's Ray <laughs> Allen. I'm like, no, it is Steph yeah. Curry. It's gonna be Steph Curry. So today I feel very vindicated, but yeah. your 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 point is valid. Continue. Unequivocally the best shooter of all time. The greatest I'll get that out shooter of, the way. of all time. Yes. So my whole stance on this entire thing was him breaking the record doesn't change a single opinion that I've got. He has been on this trajectory for years. We knew it was happening as long as he stays healthy. This is a guy who shoots, uh, let's see, 13 threes a game this year, 12 the year before, 9, 8, 10, 10, 11. He shoots more than Ray Allen ever did. Ray Allen shot, uh, let's see, 4, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 8. He didn't come close to 13 a game. This is something that was inevitable. It was going to happen so long as Curry's ankles held together. So for me, I think I said, like like I said, it's a cool moment for him and his team, the organization as a whole. But as a as someone who watches basketball, as you do, um, you know, we're entitled to our own opinion. My opinion is I didn't care. I think it is incredible for Steph and the team and the organization. But I just don't care because it doesn't change an opinion. Game records are so much more entertaining and so much more um i don't know just just better tv uh wilt chamberlain obviously not really footage people argue there's you know radio commentary about his you know record breaking in a game of points whatever that kind of stuff clay scoring 37 and a quarter incredible it is just a different feeling than when someone on one night that I've seen coming for years does something. So I just didn't, I, I mean, for lack of a better term, I, I didn't care. So, all right, rebuttal to your, your game um, argument. So those are, are, it's understandable because those are so much more spontaneous. You, you yeah, they come no out of nowhere. Idea. You have no idea that these are coming. Yes. So I think the argument in terms of this doesn't change anything about Steph is almost the equivalent to people, you know, now they they joke when they tweet it, but saying, and people said Steph Curry wasn't a good shooter. Nobody is saying that. Nobody is saying that, now, except Steph maybe. No one is saying that this now makes him the greatest shooter of all time. People have been saying it, you know, five, six, seven years, yeah. whatever. Everyone's been saying it forever. But to me, like, there are, are certain times in sports where things happen and you'll just say, I will always remember where I was when that happened. And it's it's historic moments, right? Like it's it's Tiger, you know, winning the Masters a few years ago. Like watching that Sunday, I was glued to the TV and Carmen couldn't understand why. I was in church getting notifications to my phone <laughs> that Tiger was closing in on the lead that final Sunday at the Masters, went home and I, that was what I did for the entire afternoon and it was just incredible. You see him celebrate, you know, with his mom and you know with his kids that were there. Um, LeBron, you know, game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals. Blocked by James. I will always remember I was sitting in the back room at our old house. Uh, we had um, some like bar stool chairs in the back. And me, one of my best friends, Cedric, and my brother-in-law, Anthony, were sitting in the back watching that game. I remember Draymond going crazy in the first half, you know, hitting threes. But this is just one of those things um, where you just you know that it's coming, but it's still it's one of those things that you just never know when you're going to see something like this again. We might never, ever see another Steph Curry as long as we live. They're already talking about guys, uh, like for instance, I'm looking on StatMuse here in terms of uh, players that have played at least 400 games, uh, the most three-point field goals attempted per game. Steph is at the top with 8.7, then is followed by Dame with 8.1, Harden 7.7, Buddy Heald 7.5, um, Clay Thompson 7.0. Paul George like so the point is these are all guys that are still currently playing Ray Allen finished his career 5.7 attempts you know per game from three so who knows if it was a, a different era era uh, maybe Ray Allen you know that record is a little bit further uh, than it was Steph still eventually eclipses it anyways but they're talking about guys now in the league like you know Luka Doncic LaMelo Ball, uh, Trey Young, Anthony Edwards, these guys that are taking these high volume of three-pointers 
that eventually this is it's going to take a while, but um, we're probably going to see multiple guys past Ray Allen, past Reggie Miller. Um, you know, these guys are going to finish like in the you know top two or three based off the current trajectory. Uh, who knows? They might even end up passing Steph Curry. So right now, like the next big um, milestone in the NBA that I kind of have circled is going to be LeBron James eventually passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like if him becoming the all-time leading point scorer in NBA history, I think he's already like overall, if you include playoffs and, and mm-hmm. regular season, I think yeah. he may already have that record, which yeah. I don't understand why we don't count that. Like team success makes your individual performance not mean as much. Like Steph passed the overall regular season and postseason threes like weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Uh, right. past Ray Allen like a long time ago it's it's been a minute but mm-hmm. um in, just in terms of like regular season like I that's what I live for when it comes to sports like these moments that are just once in a lifetime like lightning in a bottle things that we're not going to see again and I agree with you the games are a, are a big deal like game six clay I will never ever forget watching game six in the yeah. western conference finals um in 2016 against the Oklahoma City Thunder Clay mm-hmm. single-handedly kept them in that game, kept their season alive. Got I'm I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. That game was just so incredible. So that is a valid point that the games are important, but to me, the moments in history, even when you see them coming miles and when you see them coming years away. We knew 4 years ago this was going to happen with Steph, but I mean, you could sense the my wife, it, I love her to death, does not care about the NBA, cares about the Magic. She's a big Magic fan. But last night, we're you know she's kind of doing her nighttime routine. I told her like Steph's about to break the record, stopped everything that she was doing, sat here, and it was like you could feel the energy of Madison Square Garden every time they came down the floor on offense. The entire building stood up. Everyone's phone is coming out. So, um, yeah, I, I this is one of those things where like we can just agree to disagree. You're not going to change your stance, but like. I don't know. It's like those are the magical moments in sports that you just you know in the moment that you're you might not ever see something like that happen again. And that's why I feel like we have to appreciate records being broken like that. Like the other night watching the the, the Bucks play uh, the Bills. Now, I'm not as big of a football fan as I am a basketball fan, um, but I believe it was uh, it was Brady the other night that uh, broke the record for uh, completions. And just like small stuff like that, it's just cool to be like, you know what? That was a moment in history. I got to see that. Like the Warriors, uh, you know, 2016, going 73 and nine. I made it a point when they came to town, when they came to Orlando. Now it's a whole season. It's a little bit different than, um, you know, like an all time, you know, three point record or whatever. But I was like, you know what? I want to be at that game just to say I was at one of those 73 games. Yeah. The Miami Heat, second all-time, um, you know, longest win streak. I was at the 27th game in Orlando that they won. I, I I find it cool that you know to be part of like little nuggets of NBA history like that. So I've gone enough. I will let you, uh, you know, uh, form your rebuttal if you have one. Nah, I mean you said it right. Like we'll agree to disagree. I think it was a cool moment, but just not one that like I really care about because I saw it coming. You talked about you know Tiger and and seeing him win the Masters and 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 that that was a comeback. I didn't see this coming from anywhere. I we obviously knew he he was you know participating in the Masters. That was an iconic moment because it, it I just didn't see it coming. That was something I cared about, right? That was something that a lot of people cared about. Um, but with Steph, it was a little different for me and and in, in, in terms of the moments, right? And and you said like the game moments are just, you know, out of nowhere, you know, the block by James, Clay and Game Six Clay has become that whole thing. There are just certain things that I care about and certain things I don't. I mean the the, the Steph Curry thing, if it if it helped an argument, that'd be great. But for me, you look at Ray and you say, if Ray shot, you know, X amount of threes more, you know, if it was a different era, would it have? Maybe if it like if we put Ray in Steph's time, maybe right because then Ray growing up maybe would have shot some more threes or or extended his range a little bit more. Ray Allen shot five for his career, five point seven attempts a game, and shot forty percent. Pretty incredible to shoot forty percent especially if it's on more than, you know, three attempts a game. Steph, for his career right now, it shoots almost nine, 8.7, but he shoots 43% from three. 
this is just something that like I don't have to bring up that he broke the record for threes made in a season because or in his career because it doesn't. I mean the, the I, my per game and and percentages that's all I need to tell somebody this is why you're wrong if you think Steph Curry isn't the best of all time. An old head, I think even all of them have come around on it. So. So yeah, I I think that that we would just agree to disagree. I did want to Jonathan discuss some things that are just kind of ridiculous. Like there there's a lot of times in NBA history you and I haven't gotten to to experience or didn't get to live during that time, right? Uh sportingnews.com did an article saying um, you know, Wilt you know, you say 100 points to which he, you would reply. This person would reply, whoever wrote the article here. I will uh, see if I can find and give credit. Micah Adams from Sporting News. He said, you know, you'd bring up Wilt's 100 points, and I'd say that's not even his most absurd record. This says Wilt Chamberlain once averaged 48 and a half minutes per game in a league with 48-minute games. You know, the, the, most basketball fans know this record, but it is one of those that is just absurd. Another one, Walt Bellamy once played 88 regular season games in an 82-game season. Um, so I don't know the context with Walt Bellamy playing that many games. Maybe maybe you do. I'm not sure. I, I haven't heard that one, no. So I'll have to do some research on that, and you guys can too. Um, another one here, uh, A.C. Green once played 1,192 consecutive games. Obviously, the league was not privy to load management at that time. And I was wondering how many seasons, joints. right? He played that is that is equivalent to in an 80, 82 game season. If you're playing 82 a year to playing 14 and a half seasons in a row without missing a game. <laughs> uh, Rashid Wallace once got teed up 41 times in a season in a league where players are now suspended after receiving 16. So those are just a few, Jonathan, that I think are just wild. Um, and it was in an article tagged, you know, talking about Steph Curry and why, you know, this might be another one of those, you know, it's the NBA's next unbreakable record. Um, or so it seems, right? And so those are just some some things that are kind of ridiculous. I'm going to have to look into Walt Bellamy and the fact that he played 88 regular season games. Oh, probably because he got traded. I think that's got to be what it he is. He had to have, yeah. He just got traded so many been. times that he played 88 games, and he just really yeah. got the, the worst end of the deal there. So there are some ridiculous records for you, Jonathan. So I want to close with asking you, um, Warriors 2016, did you watch the 82nd game like when they like or whenever it was the game that they officially broke the record? Uh, that I like did a watch. Big deal for you. I did, yeah. I because because I wasn't, you know, we weren't sure, right? It was coming down to the end, and that was one of those things where I was like, I, you know, we weren't sure, and then it got to the point where we're like, oh, they actually like they're gonna do it. They're gonna be better, better than the Bulls in a record. Yeah. So when LeBron, you know, whenever he is set to eventually break the all-time scoring record, is that something that you're gonna care about? No, can I see That's it coming? Wild to me. I, that is wild. But to but me. dude, it I don't doesn't understand. Well, okay. Will it be one of those things where, um, in an argument, maybe you could that say is the, oh, to me that's the ultimate unbreakable record. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous just, because it, because it speaks to the longevity of of LeBron. Yeah, like we and can I talk think, about the volume with these guys shooting threes, but you still yeah. have to average twenty five points for twenty plus years to right. break that record. Like, I just that's not going to happen again. I don't think. Yeah, and and who knows, right? And that that's the that is the the cool thing about those records. But at the same time, um, you know, I I just in terms of like, will I probably watch it? Sure, yes, because like Steph, you know, in terms of how it was a cool moment at MSG for him, I will watch it. It doesn't change anything for me about LeBron. LeBron's been my goat for years and years, um, and, and so yeah, I mean, it'll it'll be cool for LeBron. And uh, it, it's it's cool that he will then hold that record, but at the same time, I see it I see it coming, and I I you know I, it's just one of those things. That's just kind of my stance on on those types of records. That record has has been set in stone four years longer than I have been on this earth. Yeah, it's crazy. It's thirty two years now since mm -hmm. uh, Will you know I'm not Will excuse me. Kareem um, you know, left the NBA, and that record has just been sitting since. So we can agree to disagree. I would love to hear your guys' uh, you know, opinions on this in the, the comments below. Let us know. Do you care about records like this? Do you not care? And, and, and let us know why. So um, we're going to go ahead, uh, take a quick break here from our friends at Manscaped, and then we'll talk some NBA COVID news. 
Hey, fellas, this episode of The Six Man Show is brought to you by our favorite producers of ball trimmers, Manscaped. The global leaders in below the waist grooming are leaving 2021 with new product. Clean yourself into the new year with their ultra premium body wash. Also, special offer alert use the code SIXTH, that's S I X T H, for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Four million men already trust Manscaped. Time to join them. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's even waterproof. Let's talk about being clean, feeling, and smelling good. The new ultra premium body wash from Manscaped solves all three for the perfect addition to your daily grooming routine, but in the shower. I shower every day and hope you do too. This body wash is infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. With Manscaped, you'll be a brand new man and ready to kick all the gross hair and smells out with 2021. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code 6 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code 6 S-I-X-T-H. Happy New Year to your balls. Okay, Luke, so um, the last couple of weeks in the NBA starting to get a little bit crazy in terms of the positive COVID tests. Um, basically, today, uh, I think it was the uh, management group that um, owns the, uh, I think, it, what is it now, the Scotiabank Arena um, mm-hmm. in Toronto where the Raptors play. Um, they basically said that they are going to, for the, the Leafs, um, the, the Senators, the Raptors, um, a few of the Canadian teams, the capacity is going to be halved at those games um, just because, you know, it seems like across, you know, the country and, you know, in, in Canada and obviously across the, the NBA globe here, there's been a recent increase in COVID tests. So this is from uh, Baxter Holmes with ESPN. As of Wednesday, m- m- uh, Wednesday morning, rather, a total of 60 players have entered the health and safety protocols this season, including 43 in the past two weeks, 13 players entered protocols on Tuesday, which was by far the highest of any day this season. The previous single day high was four, which has happened four times all within the past two weeks. Uh, Chicago Bulls, Charlotte Hornets, Brooklyn Nets have all been hit with outbreaks. And um, yeah, Tuesday, Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, entered the NBA um, health and safety protocol. So something that uh, really I think was brought to most people's attention, Luke, today and yeah. I think we, we should have been a little bit more aware of this. I remember it being mentioned at the beginning of the season that uh, vaccinated players would not be tested as frequently as unvaccinated players. But it's come out that um, you know basically the last couple of weeks after Thanksgiving, they have started to ramp up testing. And now they are finding that there's more guys that, you know, have COVID. So um, the good thing, the good news is largely like almost all of these guys that are getting tested positive um, are all asymptomatic, which is great. Like the first thing, the most important thing is going to be that these guys are, uh, you know, still feeling well and, you know, not in any, um, you know, incredible amount of, of, of danger. Um, but Luke, um, what it kind of alludes to is that we've had guys playing COVID positive for probably the entire <laughs> season. And yeah. we knew at the beginning of the season, we're not here to argue, you know, vaccines and whatnot, but we knew at the beginning of the season that um, it, it was the information was out there that even if you were vaccinated, you could still contract um, and spread COVID. So I don't know why the NBA is like really all that surprised about what's going on. What is your take on this? Yeah, I think that it messes like the, the way that they have gone about it, and all of a sudden they change their tune about testing is kind of ridiculous. Because the, I mean, you've had the Bulls who you let them play, you know, with with their that their outbreak essentially until just recently, where they postponed and rescheduled a couple of the games here coming up. Like they they're just now doing this, and it's like we had a full month. Where like now you're just messing with like like teams records, like this is something that like they if you know it, let's say the Bulls they took a hit on some of their with their record their their record I mean they lost some games because they were short and all that kind of stuff. It's like what about a month ago 
when you know who knows who what team had had an outbreak and we didn't have a clue it's just like i i don't really care honestly how they go about it it's a pandemic uh you know in the united states it's you know there's been over 800,000 deaths like handle it how you want because it, it is a serious thing and it's a pandemic and uh, you know when all is said and done it has taken a lot of lives but handle it consistently like say you're going to be stringent on testing from the beginning and I understand like new strands have come out and they're saying like this new one's asymptomatic and all that kind of stuff but it's like test that way from the beginning like don't like all of a sudden change the way you do things and it's like i just wish you guys would have done this starting at the beginning of the season instead of just like right like after thanksgiving and now teams were you know now that they're hopefully they figure out how to handle this but it's just like you know they were all uh, so players were just running around positive covid and it's like i don't i don't understand like at, at what point i don't know man it's just it's very bizarre I think it's really apparent, and I, I think it's kind of hard to argue against the likelihood that we've had COVID-positive players playing About. in games mm-hmm. for the entire season. Um, they haven't been testing. There's no way to prove that. They wouldn't have a player test positive and then say, hey, you're fine. Go out there. Right. Um, but I, I think just all the evidence points to the fact that we've had guys playing in games that are, are COVID positive. Um, regardless of, of what you, you know, think about Jonathan Isaac and his, you know, vaccination status. One of the things that he mentioned during his media day availability was things should just be consistent. You just alluded to that fact. Guys can play on the court together. They can sit next to each other on the bench, but they can't sit next to each other on the bus. They can't eat in the same room. If you're not vaccinated, you can't be in team meetings um, like at the hotel before a game. But again, you can sit right next to them on the bench during the game. Like my thing is be consistent, make it make sense. Um, you know, I think this is, I think we're in a different time than we were almost two years ago where, you know, nobody knew what was going on with this thing. We, it was just so much was unknown. The league like completely shut down. People are talking about, you know, a, another bubble and, and, and shutting down again. Um, Right now, so far, only the Toronto Raptors of the NBA teams has even decided they're going to lower the capacity of fans at these games. I just don't see another scenario where the league says, okay, we're going to go ahead and shut down again. We're going to go back to a bubble. I don't see a way that the um, the NBPA um, agrees to that. I think it's it's pretty like universal that all the players hated the bubble. They were glad that they were able to finish the season. But, you know, if you ask LeBron James, he has PTSD whenever he hears the word <laughs> Orlando now. So, which, I mean, might explain the outburst that we saw from him in the third quarter the other night, although that was in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to me, it, it's just, I think, and, you know, it, it may be unfortunate, um, but not everybody is going to get the vaccine. Like, we're, we, it, that is so evident now. Whether you want to argue that everyone getting the, co- the vaccine will take care of all of this, I I don't know enough to speak one way or the other to that, but I am now in the belief that moving forward, COVID is something that we are going to have to learn to deal with. And especially if this Omicron variant with, from what I have read so far, um, is that a lot of those cases have been either asymptomatic or have been very mild. Um, I, I, I think the, the league has can go about this one or two ways. They either totally care about like not spreading COVID and they're going to shut down teams. They're going to shut down the league again or whatever, or at some point, because I'm, you know, I'm in the belief that COVID isn't going anywhere. Eventually we're going to get to the point where if guys are asymptomatic or they feel well enough to play, we will see I'm that this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I believe that at some point, and you don't have to speak to this if you don't want to, but I'm in the belief that at some point we're going to see guys um, you know, playing with COVID if they're healthy and, and asymptomatic. It's just... Um, they did the last month. <laughs> yeah, they exactly. They did the last month. Um, mm-hmm. Luckily, you know, these guys are healthy. All of the data, you're healthy, you're young, you're in shape. Um, you know, all that is working in your benefit if you do contract COVID. Yeah. And if you are looking to make the argument that these young guys can be healthy and I mean, I mean, there's not, uh, there's never going to be data because they're not right now, at least they're not going to let healthy guys go out there. But 
you and I are in agreement that all of the evidence points to the fact that more than likely, I would say I'm almost positive, mm -hmm. um, no pun intended, but guys have been playing with COVID this yeah. season. It's just, I, I don't know how you would argue against that. Yeah, and full disclosure, I've said it before, but I know that there's always new people listening. Um, speaking for myself, I am someone who is vaccinated. I am going to get the booster most likely. I am someone who is on the side of, of the vaccine 100%. But yeah, it, it, that is the bottom line. The last thing I really will even touch on with this, and I, as we've been saying, the common thread here is just be consistent. Like the, the NBA needs to just stick to what they like stick to logic i mean uh, logic is is i know it's you know hard for some people to use but but i mean this is this is something that is just easy and and ji despite our differences on the vaccine beliefs ji you know laid it out perfectly in terms of what's logical and what's not and uh it, it stinks man it's something that's going to be like you said a part of you know this country this world probably for the rest of existence and I hope that as science improves and as things get better, you know, that, 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 you know, we'll be able to, you know, have finally be able to have some more normalcy. Thankfully, we've made a lot of strides because we found out more and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, man, it is, uh, it's, it stinks to be quite honest. Well, unfortunately, like too many, too many folks nowadays, their logic is directly correlated with like the political camp that they align with. Mm. And, um, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Like, make it make sense, you know? Yeah. Um, in my opinion, this is where the NBA is going to lay down, like, where they, like, do, do they really care about COVID or do they care more about their public perception and continuing to make money? Because if they really care about COVID, why do we have 18,000 people in attendance at these games when we know that whether you're vaccinated or not, you are still able to spread the disease? So yeah. if, if the NBA truly cares about COVID and, uh, you know, they're trying to keep people as safe as they say they are, then maybe we are going for another shutdown. But um, just given the evidence that we have now, I, I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope everyone is going to you know continue to be healthy and everything like that. But yeah, NBA, make it make sense, guys, because uh, what you're doing now, it, it doesn't doesn't make a ton of sense. So. Luke, uh, I think that is going to do it for us this week. Um, do we have anything else? I need to do a quick Patreon shout out before uh, before we head out here. No, that's it. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, I want to shout out our patrons really quick. If you guys are unaware, we do have a Patreon channel, three different tiers uh, that you can subscribe to to help financially support the show. So shout out to Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Keith Garcia, Zico, Carson Tulo, Nathan Lynn, Ellis, Norm L. Magic Player History, and Giulio. We really, really appreciate you guys. For Luke Sylvia, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You guys are listening to Shoot the Shot, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya.